All right, I'm gonna do a real quick video here, a little live stream broadcast type of deal. I'm, the title of this is A Straight Betwixt Two. Okay, um, if you're not familiar with the scripture, I'm gonna read it here. Uh, Philippians chapter one, verse 22 says, but if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor, yet what I shall choose, I what not. For I am in a straight betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better, Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. Now, of course, Paul is talking there about dying and, you know, for me to live as Christ and to die as gain, verse 21. So he's saying, you know, he's in a straight betwixt two, to, to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. But then what does the body of Christ do when he's gone? All right. Now, I'm not dying. OK, <laughs> sorry to the enemies of the ministry here. I'm not dying, but um, but I have this. It's kind of a spiritual version of this. Straight betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. Um, what I'm going through right now is this this debate in my mind, and my wife and I we've been going back and forth on this thing for a long time, and that is the the kind of the two different uh, ways that I do ministry. Okay, there's there is uh, the outdoor preaching and teaching of of God's word, which is where I just feel alive out there. I feel you know, I'm really in my element there. Um, there's that, and that's great. Uh, but then there's the in the office here, uh, exposing of, of wicked movements and things like that. And it's two different worlds. It's two totally different worlds. I feel very much alive when I'm preaching from the Word of God, and just uh, the Lord and me, you know, put together the sermon notes, and and He tells me what to say, and and it's great. And I and it's you know I enjoy it, but then I have this uh, type of thing where I'm I'm at a computer and I'm having to watch a lot of the enemy's material and whatever else. I'm going to get into detail here exactly what I'm talking about. Um, you know, it's kind of it it's kind of relates to this passage here. Verse 23 is the departing and being with Christ. It's kind of out in nature. I feel more you know, close to the Lord, but then nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. Well, that's kind of like the exposing of the false prophets and everything else. And by the way, what I'm going to be doing here, this is, you know, after this live recording is out, um, some of you are going to miss early parts of this or might even miss the live stream altogether. Um, you can leave your comments down in the uh, comment area there and I'll, I'll certainly read them. Um, but I just I wanted to put this out and I'm, I'm going to be going over some notes that I have here, um, some different thoughts here. and. Um, and then I want the, um, you know, the body of Christ out there. I want you to, you know, give me some suggestions um, because a lot of people say, you know, who's Brian accountable to? Well, I'm accountable first and foremost to Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. But I'm also accountable to the body of Christ. And I have been for many, many years. And there's lost, you know, wicked people out there that I'm not accountable to them. And uh, they think that I should be, which is kind of funny. But, you know, there's people that support this ministry. There's friends and, and things of the ministry and I'm accountable to you and I look to you for guidance a lot of times you know I, I, I pray about things Lord will help me make some decisions but there's other times that um, you know I, just yesterday we got a, a, a letter in the mail at our ministry PO box and it was literally something we've been talking about and they asked the question you know do you have a print catalog available what materials do you have offline that are available and we've been talking about that, the need to really go back to that, the offline type of stuff, you know, more DVDs and whatever else. So, you know, we do see the Lord answer, you know, through the body of Christ a lot of times. And that's why I'm bringing this up. Um, so I'm going to be just looking at the, the live stream thing here for a little bit. And then at the end, I'm going to actually open up to questions um, from you. That will give plenty of people time to, to click on this and see what I'm talking about. If you just join me, I'm talking about um, a decision that I need to make here, straight betwixt two. Um, and, um, you know, the the outdoor preaching versus the indoor exposing of false prophets and false ministries. And I'm going to talk specifically about who I'm talking about here in just a little bit. Um, but I'm going to leave, you know, open up to questions and I'm going to be responding to people's questions at the end of this little broadcast thing here. So right now I can't even see anything but just myself here. I don't have another window open. Um, so 
that's, I guess, a little bit of an intro there. Um, so what am I talking about? What is the, the debate that I'm having right now? Well, um, two different things, two different projects right now that I've been working on and, uh, and that I want to work on. Um, and that is this new IFB movement, exposing it. Um, I've been working um, quite a few hours on watching a lot of their stuff and I'm getting some, I mean, I already brought up the, the new IFB no face palm challenge. That was more of a funny thing. I mean, it's blasphemous, the stuff that they're saying and just wicked her heretical nonsense. But the Lord showed me even more things, you know, just going through these guys preaching and teaching because, you know, people outside of their movement really aren't watching them that much. You know, you might get somebody, but I've been really doing a really detailed, thorough job of, of getting in and, and finding some just really bad stuff that these guys are saying. And I've been working on, um, you know, basically a documentary to expose the new IFB. But I'm having to kind of go back and reconsider some things, which I'll be talking about here. That's so that's one thing. The second thing is the thing of the. Uh, Outdoor videos and outdoor sermons, which I did more of those. I've been doing them for many, many years now. I'm going the way back to the beginning, 2009. I have outdoor stuff that I was doing, um, but it really, you know, the some of the best stuff I put out was this past year uh, with the new, you know, intro, the music intro, and everything else. And um, you know, since then we've gotten, you know, we have a computer now that can actually do 4K video, put 4K video that it'll be you know, on YouTube as 4k video. Um, you know, I have my cameras and, and I just actually bought, uh, another royalty free CD, um, royalty free music, uh, for upcoming video projects and, and just a lot of really neat ideas and things. And, um, we're going to be doing a lot more, um, natural background type preaching and, and things this year. And I want to get some done before the snow is gone. That's another thing. I want to be doing um, some outdoor stuff while it's actually snowing in the snow. Um, you know, I'm really anxious to do that. And I've been so busy with other things that I haven't had time to get around to that as we've been restructuring the ministry. But that's the direction for the ministry for the future. But this new IFB exposed stuff is there as well. So I'm going to go over a couple of points here. We'll go after, after the first one first, the new IFB exposed project versus number two, the really high definition 4K outdoor preaching and teaching of the word of God. Um, <clears throat> some pros, some good things about the new IFB exposed uh, thing, because this, this is the straight betwixt two. Um, departing and being with Christ out in nature, you know, uh, a little spiritual thing here. I'm spiritualizing the passage, but you know, you know what I'm saying. Um, Departing and being with Christ out in nature, and which is far better, but nevertheless, it's it's more needful to try and you know expose some false prophets and things. That's that's the debate here that I want people's feedback on. So some pros here to the exposing the new IFB. Number one, exposing grievous wolves is scriptural. Acts chapter twenty verses twenty seven through thirty one. You go there in your Bible real quickly because I just I don't I get people and they say, you know, you, you're exposing people all the time. That's all you ever do. And I just think, no, you know, it might seem that way sometimes, but you know, there's a lot of people out there that need to be exposed. But uh, what does the Bible actually say? So go in your Bible to Acts chapter 20, verse uh, beginning in verse 27. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God, which is what I've tried to do to people that watch, you know, people are familiar with this ministry. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. Again, I try to feed the church of God. Verse 29, for I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Therefore, watch and remember that by the space of three years, I ceased not to warn everyone night and day with tears. I've gone a little bit past what Paul did. <laughs> okay, he did for three years. Now, you know, he probably did in other areas too, but he's talking there to them and he says, you know, by the space of three years, he ceased not to warn them night and day with tears. Um, it's been a long time. And, you know, the hard thing is being on YouTube, um, just the, the, you know, you, you get on to YouTube and, you know, 
even if you're trying to just do your thing and serve the Lord and witness and, and whatever else, you'll see these videos popping up, you know, of people using the King James Bible and so many just heretical sects of people that's just messing with salvation. There's no repentance. Uh, you don't have to pray a prayer. There's, you know, the act or Romans chapter nine through 11 is not even for Christians. I mean, yeah, just all this stuff. And you just, uh, and, and then you see people saying there is no pre-trib rapture. Uh, dispensationalism is a lie, um, you know, and on and on and on, you know, and, and, you know, as a Christian, it's so hard to, to just say, well, I'm just not going to talk about that stuff. You know, something within you is going to rise up and you're going to say, you know, uh, this is wrong what they're saying. I need to, I need to say something about this. And it's perfectly scriptural to do that. Um, the problem is you can get sidetracked. And I will admit to, to being in, in fault there. Uh, sometimes I've gotten sidetracked and maybe going a little bit farther than I should have in exposing certain things and whatever else as far as wasting time. I don't think I've ever said anything wrong in terms of exposing certain movements and whatever. Um, I'm not saying I'm perfect. I understand what I'm saying here. But um, sometimes have I gone a little bit too far and wasted some time? Yeah, I think I probably have. Um Another pro, you know, so it is good to expose some things, and I always will expose, you know, some things. That's just, you know, part of being a Christian. Um, another pro of exposing the new IFB movement, uh, Stephen Anderson and his whole following that comes from that whole system, and that is that uh, there's definitely some problems within that system right now, and they're they're really starting to fall apart. And so I kind of feel. You know, now as Bible believers, should we really push hard against that system so it does actually crumble and fall? Um, that would be a pro to coming out with a very detailed expose of the new IFB cult. Um, another pro is is that uh, uh, part of our research, you know, we're we're seeing that um, Stephen Anderson has actually been going to Guyana, and he's going I think twice now on these different missionary trips and he's doing some real weird stuff down there. And, um, you know, I, I'm not even going to get into all the stuff that he's doing, but it's, it's literally the area where Jonestown was, where Jim Jones went, Jim Jones, the, you know, some say, you know, Alberto Rivera said that he was a Jesuit, um, you know, definite, you know, CIA connections and things and some weird stuff that he was part of. And, uh, you know, so, you know, it's, very weird that Stephen Anderson's literally going to the exact same spot, the northern part of Guyana, you know, and, uh, you know, weird. Going to Georgetown, you know, and they're in Guyana, which is interesting, you know, Georgetown, because that's the name of the biggest Jesuit school in America. But um, another thing, um, you know, and we're both working on some of this stuff. My wife, she's done an extensive amount of research into this stuff right here. This is all stuff she's printed out from the Department of Defense and the uh, um, U.S. Embassy in Guyana. This is government documents um, tying the Baptist Church to the Department of Defense and independent fundamental Baptist Church, too, by the way. And um, people within Guyana saying that this operation that Stephen Anderson did coming down and speaking in these public schools, he was being dishonest and, and you know, getting in there and whatever else. And they were a couple of them are saying this looks like a, a military government operation that Stephen Anderson did. You know, I, I and we're finding things and whatever else. And and again, you know, would it be good to bring out some of that stuff? Yeah, that would be one of the pros of bringing out a, an expose on the new IFB cult. Um, and what I was going to do, I'll just reveal what I was going to do as part of this attack on the new IFB, because these people are very, very wicked. Um, they're extremely dangerous. It isn't just some kind of a little fringe movement that you can just kind of ignore it. And it's just going to, these people are, are going out, they're doing, you know, this soul winning thing that they're doing no scripture at all for what they're doing. This, this, you know, there's no mention of door to door soul winning in the entire Bible. Nowhere. When they're going house to house, it's their teaching doctrine to save people. There's no such thing as door to door evangelism. That is, that is nonsense. Um, and, you know, it's all it is. It's just this quick prayerism. It's Jack Hiles um, method of getting a lot of people in and getting their money is what it is, quite frankly. And, uh, you know, I'm very familiar with this the thing. I used to do it. 
you know, so I'm, I'm a former insider, so to speak. I used to do the door to door thing. I used to go out and do the street ministry and whatever else. Um, it's one of the most ineffective things that you can possibly do. People will tell you what you want to hear, what they think you want to hear just to get you off their back. All right. And you can you can prove that very simply because where are these people at these thousands of people that have been led to the Lord? The wind, souls that have been won, where are they at? If they were genuinely getting all these people saved, there would be such massive revival in all the countries they go to in America and whatever else. It would just be incredible movements of, of God or whatever else. They're not getting these people saved. It's quick prayerism. It's very, very, very dangerous. So um, what I was going to do is uh, I was actually had this plan. I thought I'm going to do this documentary on the new IFB Exposed, and I'm going to make it available on DVD and very low cost DVD that anybody could purchase it and um, start getting it out there. Um, whether to uh, churches or just, you know, you see that these new IFB cult people are going to come to a town, do a soul winning marathon, just send it to the you know local police or send it. Cause you know, again, Steven Anderson is very antagonistic against uh, police officers, law enforcement. Um, that's a major problem. He's been banned from five countries. And he's still on YouTube. You know, again, figure that one out. But these guys are calling, you know, they hate the Jews. They openly say that they hate the Jews. Again, I have proof of that. I've unfortunately had to watch the videos and things, but I got the proof. I have the video segments where they're saying this. Uh, they hate the nation of Israel. They deny the Holocaust. Um, they're saying that, that sodomites cannot be saved. Even if, even if you get one that turned from that lifestyle and, you know, has truly repented and they they're have a new life, whatever. Nope, sorry. They can't be saved. You know, I mean, these guys are just so wicked. They want to they want to execute people. They want a righteous government to execute people. They are they are not just a cult. They are actually a very, very dangerous, um, very wicked group of, of individuals, this whole new IFB thing. And so I was thinking, make a DVD exposing these people, what they really believe to get it into the hands of the people where they're going to be coming and doing this uh, soul winning thing and also make print flyers that could be put up on bulletin boards and whatever else, just warning people about this new IFB thing. Those are the pros of, of doing that project. Okay. The cons of doing this project, the bad aspects to it. Um, the new IFB, if, if we would um, expose them on this level, they could use the news media could use this to spin it and attack all Bible believing Christians. Um, I was actually con contacted by uh, somebody from the, I forget if it was from the government of Jamaica or somebody, an activist group or whatever. But when Steven Anderson was going to be going to, to Jamaica and they, they did ban him from coming into the country, um, they actually contacted me and they said, we know that you've done a lot of work against Steven Anderson. Could you help us promote this petition or whatever to keep Steven Anderson out of our country? And I looked at the, the things that they were attacking Steven Anderson on. And some of them were Bible believing stands, you know, um, stands against feminism, stands against sodomy and, and things like that. And, and it's, you know, help us stand against Steven Anderson because he's for these things. And I'm thinking, OK, but if I do that, you know, there's some things that Steven Anderson has, you know, taken from the Bible believing movement that are right and true. But then he adds all of his poison into it. And so, see, if I if, if we would bring out this stuff on the new IFB. And they'd be listed as a hate group. I think they already are. But if they'd be listed as a hate group and, a, and then a terrorist organization or something, um, they could use it to spin it and say, see, people that hold to the King James Bible exclusively, people that uh, whatever, and get down through the list of things that Anderson has right and that would line up with Bible believers like us and then lump us all together. That's one of the dangers of me coming out with a big, documentary exposing the new IFB. So, you know, again, I'd, I'd like to have people's thoughts on all this stuff. Um, I'm not seeing any comments right now or whatever else, because like I said, I just want to get this stuff out. And then I'm going to open up the comments and questions and things. Um, second point, some of the, the cons of making, taking my time to make a big documentary exposing the new IFB. Uh, we've already exposed Stephen Anderson for many years. I think my first video came out in 2009, the uh, post-trib rapture thieves thing. 
and I was exposing him as being a post tremor and, and whatnot. And it's just been a lot of time since then. And he just, you know, I'd, I'd say, okay, I've, I've exposed him, man, that's an heretic after the first and second admonition reject, get out of here. And then he comes out with some wild, bizarre thing and he gets mainstream media coverage or whatever. And I'm thinking, Oh boy, if I don't say anything, then it can get, you know, put back onto the body of Christ that see Steven Anderson just as, you know, he's part of the body of Christ. No, he's not, you know? And I mean, early on, I was, I, was, I thought maybe the guy was saved or whatever. No, he's proved that, you know, he's been lost the whole time since then. But, you know, if, the, if somebody really wants to find truth on Steven Anderson, they can find it without any kind of problem, you know, from this ministry, we've exposed him for years. And a lot of people, a lot of other people have as well. Um, another problem with me working on this documentary is the vexation of having to watch these new IFB people. Um, these people are just so wicked. They're just the, the hatred of Israel, this teaching that Jesus burned in hell. I mean, vile, blasphemous people. And just, you know, non-dispensationalism. And I, I don't understand what the non-dispensationalism thing is all about. It's not even so much the debate over Old Testament saints were saved the same way we are. To, that's not really the, old, the, the debate, okay? What matters most with this whole non-dispensational thing and why these antichrists and the new IFB try to get rid of dispensationalism, what matters most is that they get people thinking in the time of Jacob's trouble, which they're saying that they're going into, get people thinking that you have eternal security in that time. And therefore, if you take the mark of the beast, I'm not going to lose my salvation because I'm sealed until the day of redemption. You know, well, the day of redemption already happened, right? It's called the rapture. You know, we're called the catching up of the body of Christ. Um, but see, that's the real issue here. They have to get rid of dispensational teaching so that they can teach when the time of Jacob's trouble starts, they can teach eternal security. There is no eternal security in the time of Jacob's trouble unless you're one of the 144,000 sealed Jews. Jews, you know, physical Jews, you know, which they got to get rid of that, too. It's kind of funny. But, uh, you know, it just watching this stuff, it's, it's so vexing just hearing these people just lying and lying and lying. And, you know, I've done it for years. I've, I'll listen to false prophets. I'm not afraid of anybody's preaching out there, anybody's teaching. I'll listen to them. I'll, I'm not, I had a video debunking some of, you know, uh, um, just went and lost my train of thought there. A speech by the Black Pope. I mean, listen to the Black Pope. Whatever. I'm not afraid of anybody, you know, listening to anybody. I just don't want to waste my time and get vexed by certain groups of people. But uh, the other con of the final one there of working on this new IFB thing is it's really kind of distracting me from you know, restructuring this ministry. Uh, and, you know, I'm finding myself having to spend a, uh, just a huge amount of time watching through these sermons, picking out little things and whatever else that they're saying. And I'm not taking them out of context either, by the way. Um, you know, the when I put out the, the new IFB, you no know, face palm challenge thing, uh, I didn't, I didn't uh, misrepresent any of their stands uh, with what I showed in that video, okay? Um, They'll do this, that to us, to me, and others, you know, in the Bible-believing movement. They'll, they'll, you know, cut out certain things and, and whatever, make us say something we don't even believe. But uh, I didn't do that with any of their clips. I didn't misrepresent them. But, and I, and I wouldn't be in this new IFB, you know, documentary. Um, just trying to prove to people how dangerous these, these idiots are. But, so, you know, again, it just takes so much time. And, and I think to myself, is it's really even worth it. Um, now, on to the second thing here, the 4K nature sermons, like I was doing last year, but not in 4K. It was just high definition. Uh, with that, um, pros of the, you know, going and, and just dropping this whole uh, thing, because this is what the my question is about. Should I do the documentary or should I just drop that whole thing and just say whatever and then do the nature thing go out and start preaching outdoors again um the pros to that number one much better chance to evangelize the lost um i'm not going to get many people convicted of, of sins and whatever else i mean we have actually had over the years it's not been wasted we have had people come out of the anderson system because of our videos um and said that they you know found true salvation and 
you know, they're away from the Anderson cult. So it wasn't wasted time, but um, there's so much more fruit that comes from actually the, the more peaceful out in nature, beautiful scenery, you know, really showing, showcasing what God made, you know, his creation and, you know, presenting the Bible uh, from an uncompromising preaching stand. Um, so it's a better chance to evangelize the lost. That's one big pro of, of dropping this whole new IFB documentary thing and just focusing on preaching. Number two, um, it's a lot harder for the enemy to copy me when I do that outdoor stuff and infiltrate the movement. Um, I know that they still try. You know, I see people showing up and, and uh, even putting on a black vest, you know. I mean, I live in Maine. I don't do this for style, okay? <laughs> Uh, I love my black vest, but it's, you know, it's a wool vest and, a, and it, it's for warmth. You know, this upstairs is not heated. I have a heater in underneath my desk right now. It just heats me. <laughs> I don't heat the whole room, but uh, it's it's cold here. Okay, that's where I, why I wear a black vest. And I've seen others that, you know, li don't live in cold environments and, and they put black vest on them. And they go outside and they preach and, they, you know. But uh, the kind of scenes that we're going to be going and getting this year, I kind of like stuff we did last year. I mean, last year we climbed to the top of a 2,500, you know, foot above sea level, uh, Mount Chase. And I filmed from up on the very top of it, up on the summit of Mount Chase. Well, there's another mountain not too far from Mount Chase called Mount Katahdin. And that one's just about a mile high. So over twice the height of Mount Chase. I don't know if I'm going to be filling up on top of that this year, but who knows? But there's an awful lot of uh, beautiful waterfalls and, and a lot of very you know, amazing, breathtaking scenes around the area. And I like to get some more of that. And, um, of course, on our land as well, um, do some more videotaping there. And, um, you know, that's going to be something that lost people are going to you know, look at and say, well, wow, this is beautiful stuff. Um, but again, just to I'll stop here for just a minute. If you just joined us. Um, I'm talking about this thing of a straight betwixt two, um, kind of comparing in a spiritual sense to the, the Philippians uh, chapter. Um, I went and turned from it there. Um, chapter one, I think it is, where it talks about, you know, Paul being a straight betwixt two. And I'm saying, okay, should I work on this new IFB exposed project or on, you know, going back to the natural outdoor sermons? So uh, getting back to it. Um, and of course, if we're just bringing out stuff that's just, you know, natural you know preaching out of nature people infiltrating it's it's kind of pointless to infiltrate because people are more positive about the videos but you go after the anderson cult and you have his little cronies coming in and infiltrating and you have all the other little cronies coming in and infiltrating pretending to be friends of the ministry and then they're trying to draw away disciples after them like we read about in acts chapter 20. um you know, verse 30, also of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Yeah, that happens a lot. That's happened a lot over the years with this ministry. A lot of people come along doing that. But another pro, another good thing about the nature sermons is um, organized religion is the real enemy and nature videos are the best way to fight going to church. Okay, I had to write that down there. Um, but, you know, this thing of the going to church. Um, I've seen that my enemies, they don't want to copy that one because you see uh, the enemies of this ministry, um, the ones that are knowing and the, the ones that really understand the, the, the issues and things, um, they're all part of the Antichrist system. And in the future, the you know for the Antichrist to retain control over all the people, um, they're going to have to, number one, bring in radical Roman Catholicism again. That is the system of the papacy. Or the system of the Antichrist, excuse me, the pap system of the papacy will be the system of the Antichrist. I firmly believe that. And the I believe that the Antichrist, when he shows up, is going to be a counterfeit Jesus Christ. And he's going to basically say to Pope Francis, perhaps, or he might be dead and another bad pope come along. But he's going to come in and he's going to be the hero of the day. And he's going to save his church and say, step down. You're no longer worthy to be here. Whatever. And they're going to reinstitute a radical form of Roman Catholicism, kind of like the pre-Vatican II stuff. And the new IFB is definitely part of that. I mean, they, they, a lot of their doctrines are the same as pre-Vatican II Catholics, and they're just as radical about wanting to kill 
heretics and the reprobate doctrine. If somebody's reprobate, they can't get saved. So what's the point of letting them live? You see? Yeah. But uh, they'll, they'll fall right into the movement. But the one thing that they can't stand about a ministry like mine, and the biggest thing I've ever been attacked on is the thing of not going to church. Um, there's no scripture saying go to church or going to church or whatever else. There's no scripture for that. The church is the people. It's not buildings. And again, there's a, you know, I've been over that many, many times. So again, people, you know, when I start to do the outdoor nature sermons, it's harder to copy me. It's harder to infiltrate the movement. And they really don't want to infiltrate in terms of they don't want to let, you know, or let people know that you don't have to go to church as a Christian. OK, uh, that's that's a big, you know, uh, a big, terrible thing, I guess, a, a cursed thing to say, you know, for papists, you know, um, how you could say that. But I think you know what I mean. Um, another good thing about the nature sermons, uh, they're much better for our health and our sanity. OK, uh, there there's times and I'm spending, you know, I'll get up at uh, four to four thirty in the morning. Spend a couple hours up here editing video, going through, you know, working on this video stuff. Then go down and we read the Bible, get breakfast, and then, you know, I'll come back up. Oliver will be playing back here behind me. Um, he's got his Legos back here. I don't know if you can see him. Yeah, you can kind of see him down there. Down there is his Legos. And, uh, you know, he'll come up and he'll be back in there. And I'm trying to listen to the video and he's asking me questions. Hold on, you know. And I'm spending all day and then, you know, I will eat supper later on and then, you know, play a little bit, and whatever else. And, and then he goes to bed and I come back up for another couple hours and work. And it's it's it, it just sitting there. It's not good for your health to sit in front of a computer. And especially when you're just being bombarded by this new IFB filth stuff, it's terrible. <laughs> I'd much rather be outside, you know, hiking back into some beautiful spot setting the camera up, you know, getting everything all ready and, and filming some really beautiful scenery and, and whatever else. Much better for our health. Um, a lot of the videos that I did this past year, 2018, where I'm, you know, at a, at a waterfall or something like that, I'm up preaching up, you know, upstream, upriver, and Oliver and Catherine are down, you know, downstream for me playing in the water and having a great time. Um, it's not the same thing as when I'm having to expose these wicked devils. So that's another one of the pros. Two cons that I will mention. Um, if I just forget the whole new IFB thing and just say, you know what? I've said what I need, needed to say. The Lord will take care of it and whatever else. Well, I've done that with some movements and they actually grow. And I think, okay, um, should I have said some things against this movement before it got big? And the new IFB is going to continue growing if people don't oppose it. And uh, you know, say, well, if this work or this council be amended, it will come to naught. Yeah, I understand that. But how much are we going to have to suffer before that happens? You know, they could bring, I believe 100% that Stephen Anderson is there to um, make us look bad is the whole thing. That's why he's still on YouTube. You know, they can get away with murder on YouTube. I've seen lesser Christian channels that, that say anything bad about sodomy or whatever, and they're just, they get the ax and they're, they're gone. Anderson can stand up on the pulpit and scream and yell and say horrible, hateful things, and they should be put to death and whatever, and he's still there. Um, so Stephen Anderson has been raised up by Satan. You can, you know, you could say Jesuit, you know, co juder or he's maybe military. Let's just cut to the chase. He's a servant of Satan, right? A minister of Satan is what Stephen Anderson is, just like Jack Hiles, you know, before him. Anderson is a minister of Satan and all his following, the little preachers that, you know, step in line and, you know, follow orders from Stephen Anderson. They're all ministers of Satan as well. Um, the stuff that they say is just out of line. I mean, like I said, Jesus burning in hell. The Jews are, are no more, um, you know, all the stuff, this reprobate doctrine and everything else is just so wicked, so vile. Um, and they're growing. Okay. And they're going to keep trying to grow and whatever else. Now they do other little infighting in there and it's very shaky. And that's why, again, I feel somewhat of a pull. Should I really come out and slam them hard to try and help bring the whole thing down? 
what should I do? Um, another thing is another con about if I don't do anything to stop them and just focus purely on natural video type of stuff. Um, I don't want to let people, uh, I don't want people to have the impression that Christianity is just 100% positive and you don't fight anything. You don't say anything negative. You don't judge things. Um, that's not Christianity. That's not Bible believing Christianity. Okay. Uh, there are, there are evil systems and evil things in this world. And we as Bible believers have to attack them. Um, yes, we're, we are supposed to have peace that passeth understanding, but the Bible says we're also supposed to war good warfare. All right. Um, we're supposed to be soldiers for Jesus Christ, not just peaceful, you know, hippies or something like that. We are supposed to be soldiers. We're supposed to fight. So that's my straight betwixt two. I'm going to move this thing over here and I'm going to see if I can open this thing up. And um, all right, I'm not going to be able to go back and read all those comments. So I will start now. Um, in the uh, comments here, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to answer some of your comments. As long as it doesn't go too fast. <laughs> um, okay. I'm going to start with uh, Shug HL1. Thank you for this live stream, Brian. I have been following you since the days you started preaching against Bible buildings. Bible buildings, actually. But, you know, yeah, good. Praise the Lord. Um, long haired, yes, but the doctrines are still the same. Okay, it's another conversation. Abraham Gonzalez, as much as I enjoy your outdoor videos, I think you have to expose these dangerous heretics. Okay. Um, Spencer Beeb, yes, I think Nelson Bibles or whatever the company is called has changed some KJV spellings. Uh, that's another issue. Thomas Nelson's a Catholic publisher, but yeah. Um, next we have, you know, greetings from, I can't read the, the Shovel one, I guess. Greetings from South Egypt. Hi. Um, saved by Grace 17, I think you should continue exposing the Anderson cult. Okay, thank you. Kimberly Ann, Fund Temple. Okay, I'm missing the meaning on that one. Jimmy Wilson, hey, brother. Hi, Jimmy. Um, blessed Hope, hello to everyone. Hi, back. Uh, Mr. M777, uh, long hair cross, I have one from Harper Collins, who are satanic, but there isn't one mistake. Um, yeah, there, th as far as the, the different... You know, editions of the King James Bible. There's some that are good, some that are bad. You might even get a decent one from Zondervan or something like that. So it's kind of confusing. Um, it's a shame. Omar Gonzalez, Church Bible Publishers, I prefer. Yep. Um, Big Mike Edge, I'm at work. Got you playing in my pocket. Ha ha. Um, Blessed Hope, I have watching from Inception Brian. Um, Bob Misho, one. Why was the devil and Archangel just. Counting Moses' body. That's another study. Um, uh, Abbey Ram. Praise the Lord, brother. You are awesome preacher. Abbey Ram from India. Well, thank you. Um, Len Curley. I sent you a letter condemning Jacksonville Church in Florida. I hope you got it. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure we did. I, I don't remember the whole thing there, but... Um, uh, just trying to see here if there's any things. Okay, Rose Petros, hi, yes, I agree. You should, you're sure exposed. Uh, Chantre, I think they've been exposed enough. It's preaching the word that will really do damage, but do what the Lord leads. That's what we're kind of leaning towards, you know. Again, it just, it's really affecting watching these people. It's just, uh, you know, um, okay. Oh man, that's went down there. Okay, I'm kind of getting in behind here. Uh, okay, Philip Newton, I believe you should do both, brother. Got to feed the Church of God. You are also good at exposing and research. Yeah. Um. Okay, Ken Martell, stick with Bible-believing preaching and stay away from the vexing new IFB. Yeah, we're kind of leaning that way. Like I said, it's 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 just been really vexing, you know, with that whole thing. Um, Paul Lewis, thank you, Brian. Great teachings. Greetings from Belgium. 
Hi. Uh, Big Mike Edge outdoor videos. Um, so my question, Aaron Judge, what was your question here, Aaron Judge? Uh, brother, I've got a question. I'm 22. Can I preach? I know God's word says 30, but there isn't time for that surely. Um, the thing of, of God's word saying 30, well, it doesn't really say 30. It's just that's when Jesus went into ministry. I think it's a good time. But, um, you know, if you, if you feel the Lord's calling you to do something, then, then do it. And the Lord will lead you one way or the other. Uh, let's see. This thing keeps updating and it's getting on the head here. Lisa Rushlow, drop documentary. We watch you for preaching. The lost chose to be lost. Okay, good point. Um, could you, KJB Soldier, could you expose the IFB and preach sermons at the same time? Not really because it's it takes so much time to go through their videos and find all the little stuff. Um, uh, Ada Stepanova, sorry I missed the beginning of live stream. I loved your detailed studies. Thank you. Um, KJV Believer, I think you should do both. There should be a balance. The outdoor preaching is very beneficial for us all, and exposing these heretics is important as well. But in the end, in the end God is in control. Okay. Um, thank you. Hi, Brian. I've been watching your videos. I appreciate what you do, KJV Believer. Here I suffer with sin. Sometimes it's bad. I'm saved. Um, but the, by the Lord, please pray for my flesh. Fights against me. Uh, fights against me badly. Yeah, I, I think it's against me badly there. Yeah, it's, you know, I understand that. It's it's definitely rough. It struggles with the flesh. Um, I'm going down through here. Am I caught up? I think I might be. Um, okay, I'll just answer this one quick. Is Jesus physically at the right hand of the Father on his own throne? Um, I did a study on that. It's a it's a detailed subject. So I can't I can't really go over all the scriptures here. Um, but it's a it's he's on it he's on the right hand of the Father until uh, he makes his, his uh, enemies his footstool. Um, it's in other words, it's a time there until. Uh, it's not that he's going to be permanently there. He's a separate God or something. Um, Roger Pinch, brother Brian, how do I answer someone when it comes to integration with the pilgrims? Non non believes non non believers, I guess, always bring this up. Uh, Integration with the pilgrims. Integration with the pilgrims. As far as you know, are you talking marital integration, like them marrying inter, you know uh, Native American people, or uh, let me clarify that. I'm not sure what you mean by that. Okay. Uh, Sean Trey, going through their nutty videos can be vexing. They've been exposed. Do we really have time to go through everything they do? No, preach on. Thank you. Um, Blessed Hope, your thoughts on Wicked Chris LaSala, BDS cult. Is God. Philip Newton, feeding the Church of God and and uh, getting the gospel out there is most important. Uh, mayhap you can do some exposures on the side. God will make time for what he wants out there. Um, Jonathan, the IFB needs to be exposed because they're telling how worse it will get, but outdoor preaching is best, so I'm kind of undecided. <laughs> yeah, kind of doing the same thing here. Uh, Rich Rue. 1 Corinthians 3.15, if any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so is by fire. Yeah, talking about the judgment seat of Christ. Um... 
Okay. Ken Martell, there are, there are very few true Bible-believing channels to watch. There are many going after Anderson now. Keep giving us good preaching. Yeah. Yeah. I understand what you're saying there. Um, King 16, King James, Bible Believer 11. I'd still be following Ken Hoven, Robert Breaker, and Steve Anderson. If it wasn't for you, I was really a babe in Christ. Thank you so much for your videos. Yeah. But, you know, again, I've, I've put out so much stuff. There's enough there that people could be you know, led away from those false prophets. Um, you know, the plant molecule, I'd say, exposed the IFB, the new IFB, among others, but it doesn't have to be a full-blown documentary. Um, well, you know, I have put out little little snippets of things. Again, that's another another uh, thing that I deal with because you have um, if I get some really good information, I can bring it out as a quick little video. Um, but I but if you have a whole lot of it, it kind of goes better together as a big documentary. So that's another thing there. Um, uh, Thoughts, thoughts on that young Guzman kid. <laughs> I had to put him in that new IFB no face palm challenge. I mean, he's coming on my channel at one point. He's, I want to debate you. And I'm thinking, okay, what are you, you know, eight years old or something? Unreal. Um, Yeah, uh, teach all nations. Hello, Brian. How about you do short exposés on the IFB as time allows, kind of like you have been, been doing on Jack Hiles lately? Yeah, like I said, you know, bringing out some things in short little clips would be all right. But I was, you know, here's another issue that I haven't brought up um, that I didn't say yet in this little video here. And that is that I'm very well aware that YouTube is censoring this, this ministry, and they have for many years, you know. And with their algorithms and stuff like that, they can just bury my information. I mean, it's I've seen this so many times with, with many of my videos. The views will just skyrocket, and then they hit about 1,000, 2,000, maybe even 3,000, and then they just plateau. And, you know, and I've seen other people, and it's just their, their video views climb and climb and climb. I mean, I'm not monetized. I never have been, so that's part of the reason. But, um, you know, if I bring out little small things and, and bring out stuff on the new IFB, uh, YouTube can just bury it. They can just totally cover it up. I mean, I've seen people bring out exposés on Steven Anderson's cult, and I go to try to look up their channel name on YouTube, and I'll write it exactly as it says, their channel name, and I'll write such and such channel, and I can't find their channel anywhere. So, you know, uh, YouTube can totally cover up for um, the Anderson cult. That's why I was thinking of if I do this big expose on the new IFB, putting it onto an offline DVD that can actually be given to people where these soul winning crusade things are going to happen. And also printing up, making a PDF that people can print and put it on bulletin boards when the new IFB is coming to town, put it on telephone poles, hand them out, whatever. Um, that's what I was thinking on that angle because YouTube is just covering up for these you know, creeps. Um, so, yeah, I could bring out things in shorter segments, but, and again, if you're just joining, by the way, the, the, the questioning here is, should I do a, a documentary on the new IFB? I've been working on it. Lord's given us some really good information, um, but it's very vexing. And it's taking a lot of time. Or should I just be doing preaching and just say, Lord will take care of the new IFB? That's what I'm trying to get some input on. So for those of you that have just uh, joined here. Um, so, you know, it's just it's something we've been struggling a lot with here about, uh, you know. Um, let's see, I, I missed a couple comments here. Go back here. Uh, more action, more ac okay, more action, I guess. Gaming. Did you see the Super Bowl halftime show with the fire raining down from heaven? CGI effects. The main fireball had an all-seeing eye inside it too. 
Uh, no. Uh, the halftime shows in the Super Bowl are always just a call to events. They've, just, they've been doing that for years. Blake Moore, thank you, Brian. God bless us all in times of need. I think your outdoors preaching is relaxing, being right under God. Eyes outdoors, some same time exposing false, do false doctrines is important. Okay. Um, you know, Ken Martell, yeah, Colossians 3.14, and above all, these things put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. Yeah, and, and you know, it's a shame because a lot of times when I'm doing, um, you know, sermons and things, I have to get a little bit, or not sermons, when I'm doing exposing these false prophets, I get a little bit nasty because they, they tick me off. And and I think, you know, I'm getting angry here. And, is you know, I always have to be aware that I'm doing this on a platform where lost people can come in and, and I don't want to, you know, it's not that I'm going to turn people away from salvation by truth. You know, truth is truth. But, you know, I, a lot of people don't understand what's going on. Okay. <laughs> yeah, good point. Mike Harrison, well, the new IFB does tend to attack itself when nobody is attacking them, so that bears considering. <laughs> you know, yeah, they kind of bite and devour each other. That that is true. Um, yeah, Hatu Paulus, I guess. Teach on doctrine. You see an error in the new IFB. A documentary documentary could never cover all the errors. Yeah, that's a good point. Thank you for that. Uh, okay. Bugs 108. Just stick with preaching and teaching. I believe you have enough out there about the new IFB. I believe you've been called to preach, teach, and build the body of Christ with the true word of God. Yeah. Apparently, I'm a call us because I delete comments and ban wicked people. Yes, you certainly are. <laughs> sure, brother. I get accused of the same thing. But uh, Rick Paris, Brother Brian, I myself get so much from your ministry. Love to hear you preach the word. The Lord will expose the wicked. Okay. Thank you for that. Jimmy Wilson, yeah, teach on doctrine. At the end of the day, it's up to you. Um, Len Curl, I'm highly concerned with this IFB movement, and we need to speak out on it. Okay. Uh, Victor says, well, I think you need to look for when they do vulnerable things and differentiate them from us. Do a video on that. Yeah. Um. Hello, Brother Brian. Any sound King James Bible homeschooling curriculum? Sure. <laughs> you know, I was going to say that. Um, I haven't really done any study on that, to be honest with you. Um, there are some uh, different things. I, I, My wife knows a little bit more about that than I do, the homeschooling curriculum thing. Uh, where's the thing out there? Rich Rule, um, you could do a video on the IFB and just name it differently so YouTube doesn't does not delete it. Well, it's not that they would delete it; it's just that they cover it over, and, and you can't even, you know, it doesn't get, you know, out there in many views and whatever else. And I, I don't care about many views. I'm just trying to say, trying to get the truth out, and they'll cover it up. Um, which is why I had the idea of the exposing the new IFB cult and doing it as an offline, online and offline type of a project. Um, and, you know, and I'll say this, if somebody else out there um, would want to work, you know, together with me on this and say, hey, you know, give me, you know, some of what you found and and put together some kind of a printed document that could be put into a PDF that I could put on my website. We could put it on KingJamesVideoMinistries.org, what the new IFB believes and, um, you know, get the things so that people could print it out and actually take it, put it on bulletin boards. If you see they're going to do a mega soul winning marathon and. 
Toronto, New York City, or wherever, get these flyers printed out and go out and hand them out or put them on bulletin boards or whatever to warn people about the new IFB call. Because they're, like I said, they're not going out and winning souls. They are, they are going out and doing quick prayerism to try and get numbers is all that they're trying to do. Um, Kuak38291, the Anderson call just released a video saying they are coming after you. I didn't hear that. Put the link to that or something. I'd like to see that. Uh, let's see here. Do I still think Edward PF123 is a Catholic? Um, yes. Uh, uh, Peterson clan were new believers and we really and really missed the outdoor preaching. Yeah. I'll, uh, I, I miss doing it. You know, that's the whole thing. I, I really, um, I enjoy it myself going out there and, and being in nature and things. Uh, okay. Um, oh, Mahia uploaded a video saying he's coming after you in the money or something like that. <laughs> okay. Him and all of his Muslim buddies, I guess, or something. Um, I would say that the Antichrist will be a half breed because he is referred to an leopard. Okay, I'll check out the light, the uh, link there. Uh, they're using. You want to come in, Oliver? Well, come on in. You come in. Yeah, Mahia Muhammad. I, it's funny. He's going to come after me or something now. Uh. So, all right. Yeah, I'll check out that link then. See, where is it up here? Okay. <laughs> You're hugging your stuffed animal here. Um, anybody else have any thoughts? Everybody's saying hi to you. Can you wave? You go. Hi. <laughs> yeah, he had a had a bad fall on the ice over here. You can see the little scratches. Trying to get a um, shovel or a roof rake actually on, out from this area where it was frozen to and uh, fell down and bang, hit his face really hard. And then the, the night later, he busted his lip trying to climb a ladder. <laughs> so good active little boy here. Um, yep. Yeah. But uh, anyhow, um, some really good input here. I really thank everybody so far for that. But, um, you know, let me know if you just, again, if you just tuned in, trying to see uh, how old is he? He's four years old, by the way. Um, just trying to see what people's thoughts are. You know, new IFB uh, exposed type of thing. And um, or nature sermons. So. That's pretty neat. Sister Chantre, 16 months old. Wow. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Take Husky down there. <sighs> I'm the Anhabawa. Mm-hmm. 
this is what's going on right now, but then that's what we're seeing here in a little bit. Yeah, Brother Jeremy, yeah, you're right. You know, they're they're still gonna keep coming out with their their nonsense and whatever else. Um, you know, and again, I'll say that, you know, I understand too that that apostasy is part of the end times. Um, you know, there is a falling away. There is the time come, you know, has come that, you know, they will not endorse sound doctrine. You know, that stuff's there too. So, you know, as a Christian, you have to kind of understand the prophetic thing there of God's plan is that that doctrine is going to get worse and worse as time goes by. So I can't, I'm not going to stop the new IFB. You know, the new IFB is the Antichrist movement, you know, with their non-dispensational stands and eternal security and every dispensation, or well, in, at all times, they don't say dispensation, but, you know, so I, I just, I feel like I need to be doing more of the nature type of sermons. Um, uh, I, yeah, they are a bunch of radical Catholics. Yeah, Mike Harrison, you can't stop the falling away, but you can save people out of these false cults by preaching against what? By preaching against the false doctrine. Yeah. Can we go back and play with your Legos? Or are you gonna sit here? I'm gonna pick your nose. Are <laughs> uh, you making goofy faces, huh? Okay. You know, and I mean, while I'm doing, you know, that nature sermons and things too, and, and, you know, I can also be, you know, kicking some of the stuff on the side. So, you know, in the sermon, I'm saying, watch out for them. Um, You know, and I got to tell you this little experience here. I actually knew of a Baptist preacher at one point in time that was a victim of Jack Hiles easy believism. And he said he's sitting on his front porch the one time and he said, he's, you know, Baptists come up and they, they do this whole, you need to get saved. You know, you need to know for sure you're going to go to heaven when you die. And he said he could not get rid of them. He was a Methodist at the time and uh, not saved. He was lost. And, um, and he said that these Baptists just would not take no for an answer. So he said he finally just said, you know what? I'm just going to do whatever they tell me to do so that they go away. And he went through the prayer of salvation, the whole deal. And he said he didn't mean it for one second. And, you know, later on, he ended up, you know, truly getting born again. Um, so, you know, this, yes, it's 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 sickening to hear these guys going out doing their soul winning. Um, but quite frankly, if somebody's going to get saved, if somebody really wants to get saved, they're not going to be affected by the Sanderson cult messing with them. Uh, okay, you got a couple more here. Um, hey, she's upside down. Yeah, upside down, yeah. Uh, KGV Believer, we learned so much from you right after we got saved. Literally just devoured your preaching and teaching. We do need more of that. You need to be fed and you're a good shepherd, brother. Oh, praise the Lord. Um, uh, VMJ, my pastor is not talking about it. Isn't there a, uh, isn't there a crown for waiting, waiting for his appearing? Loving is appearing. Yes, there is. Um, Second Timothy 4, I think it, it is. Um, Quinn Boone, nice to see you calm and not in hyper rebuke form. We need some sugary seons to help us relax. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, Natasha, I say stick with the outdoor preaching. Yes, it's important to expose counterfeits among the King James Bible believing movement, but like you said, feeding the flock produces much more good fruit. Yeah. Amen. 
Um, Trinity is 100% false teaching. I agree. Quit with the noise. Oh, uh, kind of looking at the comments and then the thing skips down on me. Um, Vision Games, Brian, I just want to say thank you for everything you've done for me and my family. Your videos have offered excellent explanations to the questions we have had for years. Keep it up, Matthew. Thank you. That really means a lot to me. Um, that's the kind of stuff that just I I really appreciate that. Um, is the new ASB NSAB, well, you mean NASB, okay, compared to the King James you know, version? No, it's not. It's from a di completely different Greek text, um, an Egyptian Greek text, whereas the King James is Syrian. Um, there's a whole big study there. But uh, KMG24, Brian, I, I haven't commented on many of your videos. I'd like to thank you. I read the KGB, accepted Jesus as my Savior. And true enough, my life has changed for the better. God bless your ministry. Well, praise the Lord. That's great. Um, <laughs> you're wacky. Uh, you're wacky, Hacky. Yeah. Yeah, I did, Brother Jeremy. I did see your thoughts on what I should do. I'm just, I'm, I'm seeing it, but I'm trying to get things read here quick okay just trying to comment mostly on people saying um you know what i what they think i should do about this new ifb or nature sermons uh peterson clan lord redeem us from mormonism led us to your ministry we learned so much from you praise the lord thank you for the good work brian again that's great praise the lord uh, Okay, I'm getting etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Do you have a church that you attend to? Yes, you're in it right now if you're saved. Um the church is the body of Christ, it's not a building that you go to. <laughs> you are too hacky. Okay. Shh. My question is, where do I find a good version of the KJV 1611? If you mean the actual 1611, like a reproduction form, there's a bunch of different ones. Um, the KJV store sells most of them. KJVstore.com. Um, okay. Uh, I feel so like that. Bro, Bro Darren, I guess. What are your thoughts on why Pastor Anderson and company is Catholic? Uh, I guess is what you're saying there. Um, they teach a lot of the things that the Catholic Church does, slightly tweaked. The Catholic Church is not technically post-trib. Um, they don't believe in a post-trib rapture, but they do believe that the church goes through the final time of purification, and so that's what Anderson teaches. You know, essentially. Um, they also teach replacement theology. Anderson teaches replacement theology. Um, and there's a whole lot of other things, too. Um, but the, the the whole church hierarchical structure as well that Anderson does, it's the same thing that the Catholic Church does. Um, that's why I believe that they're Catholic. And also, uh, Stephen Anderson works with the Universal One Church in South Africa, um, a guy named Bogart, Oscar uh, Bogart. He is a Universal One Church, which is under the umbrella of Rome umbrella of Roman Catholicism. So he actually does work with Catholics in South Africa. Um, yeah, the voice in the desert guy, he's just devil possessed nut. I tried to listen a little bit of it. I couldn't. The guy's just terrible. Um, Uh, Brother Ryan, what do you make of an old Amish man driving a Tesla? Oh, well, I don't know. I didn't see that. Uh, it's interesting. So, Saved by Grace 17. Yeah, I do believe you ought to feed the Church of God in these last days, Brian. 
surely we don't have a lot of time left and besides you have a lot of good videos on the anderson call yeah again that's that's what we've been thinking um you know that's that's what lord's been kind of placing on my heart because I, you know i'm just spending so much time watching these these just vile sermons from this new ifb thing and and you know there's so many beautiful days outside and i'm thinking oh man i should be out i should be videotaping i should be getting some scene shots i want to be out in the snow preaching um just haven't had a chance to yet we still have plenty of snow left though here in maine i mean we're february so it's been really warm though it's kind of weird but um uh Yeah, I've heard the thing of Jack Howells praying to his mother. You know, I did the thing about in in uh, my Howells Exposed study. He actually um, talked about when he gets to heaven, he can't wait to see his mother, and he can't wait to see this and that. And, and he named a whole bunch of people, and then went on, and he never named Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay, uh, that's kind of weird. So. Now, uh, Matthew 24 is not our after chapter compared to Matthew 13. So, we're back in the kingdom, yeah. Yeah, ride, pray. It's freezing rain here in Ontario, Canada, and it's slippery everywhere right now. Yeah, very much the same here. We get, we've been getting some freezing rain. You know, you get the snow pack, you know, and then it and then it, it rains on it and it kind of gets down to this slush and then it freezes and then it's just a couple inches of solid ice. It's pretty crazy. Uh, a grace and truth. Exposing Jeff Durbin and their Calvinism as well as they're bringing in the kingdom heresy would be good. They have a huge subscriber base that is deceived. Um, yeah, you know, again, though, it, it's 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 one of them things that's tough because, you know, a lot of these guys, I try to, to expose them and, you know, they're if they're monetized, I mean, they just huge, huge followings. And, and you know, my stuff is, just kind of gets buried. And I'm thinking, is it even worth trying to do it through YouTube? You know, some other, you know, coming out with a video or, or like a DVD or a or a, a book or something, you know. You know might be better that's what i was thinking with this whole new ifb thing come out with it as an actual dvd <laughs> mr m777 brian i see that you are definitely led to do more outdoor preaching i think you should go for it and the lord will lead you back if he wants you to do something else thank you um any uh shantry i just saw yours come up i saw this earlier i didn't make a mention of any chances of a Bible study on parenting. Um, yeah, uh, that that's, you know, again, it's, it's something that, you know, could come up if I'm not ex taking all this time to expose these wicked people. <laughs> um, but it's a good thought. Uh, I've seen the, where's the one there? Uh, okay, Rich Rue here, the uh, thing about my wife dressing modestly. Again, that's another thing, a, a big study. You know, she's done a lot of, uh, been doing a lot of research on when, you know, the, the history of dresses and, and everything else and, and different styles down through the centuries. And it's fascinating stuff, Lord's showed her she does so much research and people have no idea i mean she's i mean she's like i said i showed this earlier at the beginning of the video this is stuff from you know the department of defense and government documents and things here not classified or anything it's just it's right there and how they're working in tandem with the new if well the not new ifb but the independent fundamental baptist um you know, and she's got stuff on the modest apparel thing. She's got stuff, a, bit, a lot of stuff on the pharmaceutical industry. And, you know, to try and come out with this stuff while, you know, just trying to balance all this, you know, having to watch all these videos and things. 
it just uh, it's a lot. Um, you just like seeing yourself on camera, don't you? Viola Rooney, my family believes the changing weather here is due to global warming. What can I say to them? Um, well, you know, uh, okay, keep, keep the dog down there. Okay, you gotta behave. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, there's people that fall for that whole thing. I'm, I'm not really, I don't really believe in the whole global warming thing, honestly. Um, cause there's, there's some that are, you know, you get really, really, really cold temperatures and things. Um, so, but you know, it, it's best just to, to keep focused on the Bible and on salvation. Is what I would recommend there. I mean, say a whole lot more on that, but uh, uh, ride pray. You recently mentioned in a video that you would be doing more health food tips. When do believe you might start working on a series like that? It really was something that sounded interesting to me. You know, that's another thing I'd like to do in the future. Um, we've done a lot of experimenting with all different types of natural health, be it essential oils and herbs and and uh, nutritional health and whatever else but i don't i'm not fully all that great on it right now because we just the exercise thing is is failing because we're doing so much online type of stuff um the way walker's radio show are you amish no <laughs> i've done quite a few, a few videos of you know on the whole amish cult thing the amish are a very very um dangerous sect of people a lot of child molestation a lot of uh, animal abuse they're very very bad people um, they put up a really good facade, but they're they're extremely wicked. And I come from Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, so I was raised around Amish. Uh, my ancestors go way back into the early 1700s there in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. So we were there before the Amish were. Um, my ancestor, ancestors were um, Anabaptist, mostly Mennonite, but um, not Amish. Uh, Okay. What are my thoughts on 5G? Where do I begin? <laughs> uh, yeah, real, real bad. Very, very bad. Um, electromagnetic frequencies and things. Um, that's a whole other study. Barry Trower has put out some really good stuff on that. A man from the UK, an older man. Um, so I can't get into all that. Um, uh, Stephen Wise there, KJV Bible Church, Stephen Wise, did you get my letter? Yes, I did. Um, you know, a lot of my, a lot of the letters I get, I, I try to respond back and things, and, um, it's not always easy, uh, for me to respond back, uh, that, come on, <laughs> behave yourself, you can go over there and play, you know, it's a little bored here, you know, so, yes, I did get your letter, um, and I thank you for the, the things that you wrote, uh, Steve and and uh, stop and so uh, not sure when, when I'm going to be able to write back. It's kind of crazy trying to keep up with everything. Uh, Doterra organic essential oil uh, breathe help me get off my asthma inhalers. Yeah, there's different ways to get off of those and things and and um, uh, yeah. Again, I you know like to, to comment a lot more on that whole thing, but okay. Um, well, I don't have any thoughts on market card. Yeah, we're just kind of going off on a lot of different subjects right now, um, which is fine. But you know, the main question here, the whole purpose of this video was. 
continue with ex expose type of stuff or I have enough of that out there already and really get back to preaching, teaching the word of God. That's the the issue here. And I've gotten some really good feedback from everybody. Um, and so, you know, that's kind of what I was trying to keep this as. So. You me good now, huh? Oh, not going to do it. I bet. What is my opinion about the Pope's visit in Abu Dhabi? No idea. I didn't even hear about it. Um, so okay well I think that pretty much answers a lot of, of what we were thinking um, Abraham Gonzalez can you do a video tour of your bookshelf I did that years and years ago and uh, some things have changed since then so um, you know again we're trying very very hard to get a, a new place down near our property uh you know and then i'm going to be able to have the bookshelf back um so yeah welcome back jeremy um so anybody else have any questions or anything else you know any other thoughts on the issue of exposés versus nature preaching What happened to the dog that you got for Oliver? She's downstairs right now. I'm trying to stay out of trouble, hopefully. <laughs> I don't. Um, I doc Kids, I, I heard about that channel or something. Um, I forget even what it is. There's so many heretic wing nuts out there. I just kind of, you know. So. Um, Brother Brian, why are you why you are blocking again the truth shall make you free YouTube channel? I'm not. I, I haven't blocked if, if that's you there, I, I haven't blocked you. Um you know, please understand I've I've had people, you know, message me over and over over the years and say, Why'd you delete my comment? Why are you blocking me? Why have I been notified? There's so many things that happen with this, you know, channel. So, uh, any good end time websites? Uh, I really don't get on very many websites, um, honestly. Um, what is the best approach to a minister when they tell you that the KJV is flawed? Uh, just simply ask them what is the perfect word of God? If, it, if it's not the King James Bible, then what is it? What do you believe is God's perfect word? Can you hold it in your hands? And if they say, well, the Greek or something, what you say, which edition, which text, you know, that, they'll play the little game with you. I've talked about that in different studies. Fellowship. <laughs> Um, and now the end begins is the only halfway decent end times website I've had I've had uh, some correspondence with Jeff Grider and uh, he seems pretty pretty straight but yeah you know, I get people well he did this and he did that you know, well, you know. I don't know. I have, I have a terrible time recommending people because it's so many times it's turned out, you know, uh, bad. Um, the way Walker's radio show, excuse me, 
Brother Dan Lear, do you have a testimonial video? Yes, I do. Um, I think it's called the story of Brian Dan Lear. So you can watch that. Um, Alexander Hartley, nature preaching is good. I didn't know who half these false prophets were, even even were until I was led to your channel. Yeah, you know, that's that's another thing. You know, people just looking for the truth, Lord can lead them to this channel and and uh, you know, some of the exposing is good because then it teaches you how to answer false prophets, but I can't focus on that stuff all the time. It just takes so much of my time and so much of my energy. Oh. Yeah, I did I did different uh, aspects of my testimony. I did one about my past jobs I've had, you know, kind of tells you, you know, some about my life experiences and whatnot. And then I did one on my vehicle testimony because that was a big thing for me. I started riding dirt bikes when I was 10. And so I, vehicles have been a big you know, part of my life. And just, you know, what the Lord showed me over the years with that, that, that you know, vehicles don't make you happy. And then I actually had my how I got saved testimony. So. Um, what is my opinion or what is your opinion on Andy Wood Sugarland Bible Church? I have no idea. Uh, I don't know. I think the name Andy Wood sounds familiar, but you know. Um, yeah, okay. Just talked to Travis on the phone. He's at work. Uh -huh, but he said he's really missing your preaching and teaching. He says it needs it more than to be vexed by the IFB stuff. Well, another good point. Thank you. What about the ESV? A friend of mine wants one, but I'm sure there's a lot wrong with it. I have a whole series of videos on the ESV. You can look that up. Um, yeah, there's all kinds of problems with it. I'm going to be coming out with something on that in the future. Um, <laughs> goofy. I'm not goofy. Yes, you are. No, not goofy. Um, did I see the uh, video on me being corrected on speaking in tongues? No, I did not. I don't have time to watch a lot of videos like that. I, you know. Um, uh, VMJ, what about our pets and the rapture? Well, um, God will take care of them. That's the way I look at it. You know, pets don't go up. You know, they're they're just uh, creatures. They have no ability to get saved. Um, yeah, he has a tendency to make us laugh too, sister. <laughs> a little bit nutty here. Um, but you know, the the way we look at it, you know, because we talked about the thing of the the pets. You know, deal, and and it was kind of a, you know, should we get a, a dog if the Lord's going to be catching us up soon? And what about, you know, what's it going to be like for her? The, the Lord will take care of that. You know, that's the way I look at it. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> well, yeah, there are horses coming from heaven, but they didn't, they weren't called up to go up there first. So, you know, there will be, you know, some uh, kind of animal type of thing in heaven, I'm sure, but, you know, not in the sense of your dog being caught up or anything. So. Hi, she at me. Kyle Nelson, have you heard about the New City Catechism aimed at helping children and adults? It sounds very similar to the Baltimore, Baltimore Catechism. No, I haven't heard of that. Interesting. Um, wow. Uh, let's see. 
Ezio Adotori. I'm not sorry, I'm not pronouncing your name very good. Um, hi, Brian. What would you say to this hypothesis? Messiah Ben David is a different man than Messiah Ben Joseph or Yosef. One, come, one comes as a sacrifice first time, the other as everlasting father to rule the earth. No, I don't see any kind of scripture for two different messiahs. I don't. Um, there, oh, there I want to go. Brother Jeremy says, I have a screenshot of the street preachers saying that the Roman Catholic Church is the one true church. They are coming out of the closet. I'm going to be, it's going to be in my mental illness Monday video. Why am I not surprised? Um, Explain repentance. Well, repentance is fairly simple, actually. People try to overcomplicate it, but repentance is just simply that you're you are, you know, they say change of mind, change of direction, whatever. Well, you're you're coming to the end of your self-righteousness is the whole thing. You realize you're a sinner, and you know, they say, Well, you can't repent of every sin that you can ever commit it. Well, I understand that. But um, you're gonna repent of the the thinking that you're a good person is the whole thing. That's why you come to Lord for salvation. Uh, do all Catholics who haven't been witnessed to and die go to hell? Yes. Absolutely. Um, you know, Catholics go to hell because they're trying to work their way to heaven. You can't make it on that. Armine Irving, recently I've moved to a neighborhood that are predominantly Jewish. They are very nice and we are becoming close. Is this acceptable to our Lord? Yeah, absolutely. Um, don't don't feel I, don't feel this pressure that you just got to be leading people to the Lord and whatever else. The Lord will come in there and he'll make situations happen. I've seen that thing so many times. People try to do things on, on the natural side and so that you can say, oh, I've led so many people to the Lord. The Lord will set things up. And if the Lord is, is opening up a door of, of uh, you know, fellowship between you and your and Jewish neighbors, the Lord will open up an opportunity for you to witness for him. So, uh, uh, Sally G 2006, do you know something about Bill Lentz, senior pastor at Christ the Rock, Manasha, Wisconsin? No, I don't. Uh, okay, I'm really kind of. I'm going to do this for a little while longer, then we'll close this out. Um, eternal security. Why does Stephen Anderson say there are three gods seated on the throne? Because he's nuts in the head. <laughs> or like Jeremy said, because Stephen Anderson is an idiot. Yeah. It's funny, too, because the uh, Anderson cult, almost every single one of them, you know, originally said the right thing about the, the Godhead. You know, and then all of a sudden they start teaching this three person Trinity thing. Uh, um, are wedding rings biblical? No, it's more of a cultural thing. Um, there aren't any wedding rings in the Bible, but it's not something that's going to mess you up or whatever else all things are lawful unto me um but all things are not expedient you know uh, explain the godhead please okay man is created in god's image right um god has a body a soul and a spirit there's three okay but he's one being. That's the Godhead. 
in Jesus, the Bible says in Colossians 2 9, in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So there's body, soul, and spirit. And I say that Jesus is the body, the Father is the soul, and the Holy Ghost is the spirit. And these three are one. That's the best way to do it. Uh, how old is Oliver? I answered that earlier, but you probably didn't see it. He's four. How? So, can you hold up your four? Your four this way. This way towards there. Like this. Yeah, there you go. Four. So. How? How old these hikes you dad? Well, you know, why is it so hard to find this teaching in any church? They all teach Trinitarian doctrine because church buildings are, you know, they got the whole thing uh, from the Roman Catholic Church. So it's no wonder that they actually would go and, and take, you know, the Trinitarian language as well. <coughs> My brother Matthew. Um, Okay, Natasha says also in focusing on doing outdoor videos, the Holy Spirit may bear more witness to unsaved newcomers if they see you preaching the word. It will set you further apart from the satanic counterfeits. Yeah, that's that's another thing we were thinking about. You know, I'm trying to distance myself, you know, trying to make a big, you know, come out and expose the new IFB, but actually just preaching the word will make the separation happen. You know, uh, none of the Anderson cult people would recommend that anybody goes out into nature and worships the Lord there. It's a very good point, Sister Natasha. Thank you for that. How many demons does Satan have at his command? I don't know. I have no idea. You know, they're devils actually too. So we got for that. Um, hi, Roxanne. Uh, And you go like stand up I have a study on the thing of um, the devil and music, and there's a whole lot of interesting stuff on that. I'm not a musician. KMG24 answered your question. It's the thing of secular music. Um, you know, because you can get into the thing of symphony orchestra type of stuff and, you know, some older folk music and whatever, you know. Uh, there's a guy, uh, Dr. Frank Garlock, and he had some really good stuff on the thing of, you know, um, very interesting that a man is made of body, soul, spirit, and there's three elements to music. Um, harmony, melody, rhythm, and uh, some really interesting stuff there. And if you have primary emphasis on rhythm, that kind of relates to the flesh and and uh, it's really interesting stuff. It's called uh, Pop Goes the Music, I think is his uh, documentary. I don't know if it's on YouTube or not, but uh, very informative. Um, you got to watch out for backbeat and things like that in music and, and uh, whatever. So um, very detailed study. And like I said, I'm not a musician, so I really can't you know, comment a whole lot on that. I'm just not an expert on it like he is. Um, I'm not the donkey. Yeah, I'm through here. Um, yeah, like I said, I already I, you know, kind of commented on the music thing. Um, Billy Waterbug, when I first found your channel, it was my thirst to learn scripture and sound doctrine. Learn so much. The expose videos I understand, but I think it scares new people sometimes. Chad, yeah, I understand. You know, I I, I understand that. <laughs> don't don't be on a head, like you. Uh. Go boom. Go boom. Go boom. Go boom. Uh. Don't, 
Don't the tycoon don't get the main thing. Like Okay. Hi, <laughs> You like dog, okay? Uh -huh. Hi, You like dog. Yep. Um, favorite hymn? Uh, kind of a favorite. sort of an unknown one. It's called Wounded for Me. <laughs> I don't know if you ever heard of that, um, Jimmy. But yeah, Wounded for Me is, is my favorite hymn. Um, Dr. Martin KJV, why are Baptists in the UK and introducing Rick Warren's book, 40 Days of Prayer? Because Rick Warren's a, a master at sales and things, and he's part of the Council on Foreign Relations. He's an occultist. Um, Micah King, hey Brian, are the times when you want to go to the new heaven and new earth now and leave this rotten world? Uh, not usually more than about three or four times a minute. So, <laughs> yeah, very much so. Um, have I heard of Jesse Lee Peterson? Uh, the name sounds familiar, but I don't really, I don't know. Uh, yeah, how great thou art yeah that's a, another good hymn um what is this chrislam i am hearing about christianity and islam joining together um just wicked james white's involved in that thing um thoughts on greg Locke? i think he's the guy that that uh, had to divorce his wife or something or i forget what mega church pastor or something so whatever um ああ。<laughs> <laughs> Uh, as far as, uh, him, yeah, slightly. I think he's hyper. So, <laughs> as far as him, CD, that's kind of hard. There's not very many good ones, unfortunately. Um, Okay. Um, someone suggested Gene Kim. Any comments on his teachings? Thanks for your answers. Um, my issue with Gene Kim is, you know, I haven't really studied huge amounts of stuff. I mean, he's way off on the Trinity thing. Went back to the Old Testament to prove that uh, some pagan gods, it's actually a verse about the Trinity. You know what but he's got a bunch of issues and i don't trust him or robert breaker to be quite frank with you and um he he team kim really focuses on very bizarre weird things in order to get views a lot of clickbait stuff so there you go i'll put you upside down no. How's that? <laughs> good. turkey good. So, hi, <laughs> TC. A boat on a head. Um, okay, show me the truth. Sixteen eleven, brother. Is there also rewards in heaven for supporting the brethren financially to get the gospel out? Is there any scripture on it? Um, Paul writes about you know the. I think it was in the Philippians, he talks about, you know, sending once and again into his necessity um, that he might, I better look it up. 
bear fruit that will abound to your account. Uh, let's see here real quickly. Um, yeah, Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Notwithstanding, ye have well done that ye did communicate with my affliction. Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. For even in Thessalonica, ye sent once and again unto my necessity, not because I desire a gift, but be, but I desire fruit that ye, that may abound to your account. And then he goes on to say he's received all and things. Um, so you can bear fruit. Um, when you when you donate to a ministry, when you give to a ministry that's getting work done for the Lord, that it bears fruit, that it may abound to your account. So, yeah, that is a reward, you know, that will be there in heaven. So, um, I missed a bunch of things there. Okay. Let's take a set down. Yeah, grace and truth. Yep, the thing about Gene Kim. Yeah, Ruckman said numerous times, don't base your ministry on the abstract parts of Scripture. And Gene Kim totally goes against that. Um, <laughs> yeah. Happy, happy, happy. Micah King, Brian, sometimes I feel burning in hell forever is too harsh a punishment, even for my worst enemy. I would not give such a punishment. Then again, I'm not God. Well, yeah, God knows everything about these people. Um, yeah, I mean, um, God certainly can judge that stuff. You know, we talk to us sometimes. I mean, there's people that you, you know, just think, well, yeah, they deserve hellfire. But others you think, well, you know, maybe not. But God knows more about them. He knows their faults. BMJ, what is the problem with Robert Breaker, KJ teaching? Robert Breaker comes off sounding like he really knows a lot about the Bible, but he he learned all that stuff from Peter Ruckman. He basically plagiarizes Peter Ruckman. And um, Robert Breaker, his, the biggest issue I have with Breaker is his thing of you don't call on the name of the Lord to be saved. And, um, and he monetizes his channel. And he says, well, it's the same thing as taking donations. It is not the same thing as taking donations. Uh, if I see somebody that's wicked, give me a donation. I actually had Stephen Anderson donate to the ministry the one time. I think he was just trying to get my email address. But um, I sent his donation back. Well, how do you how do you determine who stop stop? How do you determine who is giving you uh, who is where's your money coming from when you're monetized? Um, so yeah, he. I don't recommend Robert Breaker at all. I think he's a total charlatan. I think he's a fraud, to be quite honest with you. Why does Stephen Anderson, or why does Anderson send his wife to a separate room? Um, I have a theory on that, actually. I had a, a, a woman um, who's a, a ex-Catholic, and she sent me this whole thing about official Catholic dogma on the thing of um, – Relations in marriage, the marriage bed is supposed to be to produce children. There's not supposed to be any pleasure there. And um, I think that that could be part of it, uh, honestly. Another thing I was going to come out with um, in the future. But I, I will be bringing out some stuff on the whole thing of the Catholic teaching of there's not supposed to be any kind of pleasure between a husband and wife. It's just, it's just produce children. Um, contradicts multiple scriptures. And... Uh, so, yeah, that's my opinion on that. Mm. Yeah. And to God be the glory. Great things he hath done. So loved the world that he gave us his son. Yeah, I love that hymn, too. Yeah, the thing that's amazing, you look through a hymn book, and you'll get you'll look at the title and this the tune will start going through your head and you flip a page or two over and you see another one and and you, that that tune will start going through your head it just <laughs> uh, the old hymns just are are such a spiritual blessing um just got here that's your son yes this little nut right here is this is the the little 
the little one that uh, he's a little crazy off the big crazy. Enough dumb. Enough your stuffed animal dog. Enough dumb. Two wiggins and two wiggins by Daisy. <laughs> and he's upside down when I got her belly. So, all right. Well, that's that's pretty much it. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop the live stream. Thank you to everybody out there. Okay. Shh, shh, shh. Are you quiet just for a minute or two yet? Nice. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, just thank you everybody out there for your input. Um, you know, yeah, I think exposing things is important, but a lot of you really made the good point that yeah, you know, the ex exposing has been done. Focus on preaching the word. I hear you loud and clear. Um, again, I'm I'm accountable to my brothers and sisters in Christ. I am not the leader of a cult. Okay, I have no desire for that. Um, so, um, I'm gonna sign out here and uh, just thank you to everybody for your input. And please do pray for us. Uh, we definitely need prayers and things. We really do appreciate that. So it's been fun. We'll be doing it again sometime. So that is going to be it. And uh, we'll, we'll talk to everybody later. Later. Stay in the word. Stay in prayer. And um, be open to the Lord for witnessing opportunities. So hope everybody has a good rest of the day.